Are you glad to be here this evening? Amen. Amen. I'm telling you. Here you go. <laughs> yes, Lord. Y'all not going to soon forget that one, are you? <laughs> well, you know, there's a, a method to my madness there. Uh, we started off with, with saying, yes, Lord. And once we, say, once we say, yes, Lord, we need to be willing like Peter to get out of the boat. Right. Amen? Right. And then the next step is going to be tonight's message, and that's let us do our best to be a servant for the Lord. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of lost people out there that need Jesus really bad, really bad. And, and I, before I forget, I want to say thank you for, for allowing me the privilege to, to come and share the gospel with you these three nights uh and i know brother cliff feels the same way it's an honor when a church calls you to come preach for them Absolutely. it is an honor because because you are trusting me with the gospel and i could get up here and preach a heresy but you've got enough confidence that you're not worried about that unless unless this has a dual purpose saying i mean if if i, if I get off on the wrong track is it going Okay. It might explode. <laughs> it might explode. So, you know, I was sort of thinking about that. I said, you know, hmm. Yeah. And I'll be at my home church Sunday. So, happy Mother's Day to all you ladies, all you mothers. Okay, I'm going to wish you a happy Mother's Day. Uh, if you have your Bible and, and would like to follow along, I invite you to, to the book of John, chapter 2. John, chapter 2, and we're going to, uh, we're going to talk about Jesus' first miracle. And that's when he turned the water into wine. And we're not, we are not concerned whether or not it was fermented or not, okay? We're not concerned whether it was a red, red wine or a white wine or some kind of Chardonnay. We, we're not worried about that. It was wine. What we're focusing on tonight is the servants. The servants. John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Let's stand as we read God's Word. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. When they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith to the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the pure fine of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them to the brim. And he saith to them, Draw out now, and bear it unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, he knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and said unto him, Every man at the beginning that set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Canaan of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for letting us come to your house one more time to sight of eternity and sing praises to you and worship you in song. And pray, Lord, that you would just... Uh, Fill my heart, Lord, with your love tonight. Fill me with your sweet spirit. And open my mouth, Lord, to be able to present the Word of God the way that you want it to be presented. And open the hearts of each person here tonight that they would be receptive to God's Word. That we, were, that we would receive the message that we need to receive. We pray, O oh Lord, for our country, for our leaders, that they would look to you. Father, I pray for this church. I love this church. I love these people. I love Brother Cliff and his family. Pray, Lord, that you just continue to bless this church. May it reach many, many people for the cause of Christ. 
Train them in the way that they need to go, that they can go out and lead other people to Jesus. Father, bless the service. Bless all of our sister churches that are represented here and all of our ministries that are going on that we can uh, collectively and individually reach people for Jesus. For it's in our name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> so, the key part of what we're going to talk about tonight is the servants. Jesus chose to use servants in this miracle. Well, let's, let's look at servants for just a minute. A servant is going to obey the superior, right? The servants don't ask questions. The servants don't need explanations. A servant simply does as they were instructed to do. And also, they're not responsible for the outcome, are they? Isn't that a beautiful illustration of what we need to be as Christians? Shouldn't we strive to be servants to the Master? And we don't need to ask the Master questions. We don't need Him to make any explanations. If we're going to be a servant for the Lord, we simply do as our Master, our God, instructs us to do. And he'll take care of the outcome. Amen? Amen? So let's look at what's going on here. So there's a wedding. And Jesus was there. There's another message right there. It's always good to have Jesus as part of your wedding. Amen? <laughs> if you want it to stick together, Jesus needs to be the, the hub of the wedding. Uh, the, the, the disciples were there. There were guests were there. There was dignitaries there. And along with all the other things that were there, there was also... A problem. And the problem was they ran out of wine. There was no wine. And you can only imagine how embarrassing that would probably have been. I don't know about you, but uh, uh, occasionally we cook and have friends over at our house. And, and matter of fact, Saturday, next Saturday, not this Saturday, but the next Saturday, all Apollo's siblings she's, uh, and, and their spouses are all going to come to our house and, and eat. And I promise you, there'll probably be 10 or 15 if everybody shows up, with, if they bring their kids and everything. Uh, my wife is, is one of four, and they got their spouses and their kids. Uh, there'll be food for 25, okay? <laughs> and there may not be 10 or 15 show up, but there's going to be plenty of food and, and plenty of coffee and tea and, and soda waters. Um, it's very embarrassing to run out of something like that. So don't you know this was a very embar embarrassing. And the mother of Jesus, she pipes up and she says to Jesus, verse 3, they have no wine. Jesus replies, woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. Now only Jesus could get by with a remark like that, all right? Guys, if your wife says, Honey, would you carry out the trash? And you said, Woman, mine hour has not yet come. <laughs> what have I to do with thee? Uh, you might be sleeping on the couch. Huh? <laughs> but, woman, in this way it was used, actually uh, was not as harsh as we make it out. To. Actually, Jesus was being very, very respectful. It's, it's like saying, ma'am. I mean, he was being, he was being uh, the utmost respectful here. All right, so, so back to the problem. Back to the problem. They have no wine. So Mary, Mary says, whatsoever he says unto you, you do it. In verse 6, the Bible says, and there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the pure fine of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. And Jesus said unto them, all right, now who was, the, who was them? It was the servants, okay? It wasn't the master of ceremonies. It wasn't the bride and groom. 
It wasn't the guests or the disciples or the dignitaries. He said to the servants to go fill them up. You see, Jesus chose servants to participate in the miracle. And if we will say, yes, Lord, and if we will get out of the boat, get out of our comfort zone, and if we will be a servant for the Lord, He will use us to help make great things happen. Amen? Amen. He wants to use us. <clears throat> Remember now, servants obey what the Master requests. Remember, servants don't ask a lot of questions. Servants don't need any explanation. Servants are not responsible for the outcome. Servants, servants simply do what, what the master wants. And, and then, wow, we get to see what takes place. So what took place? Jesus said to the servants, fill the water pots. In verse 7, he says, Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots with water. And I, and I love this part. And they filled them to the brim. Amen. They filled them to the brim. In other words, they put as much into those pots as they possibly could. Shouldn't we, when the Lord puts upon our hearts to do something, shouldn't we give it 100%? Absolutely. Give it all we've got. Then if, if there's a reason why it's recorded in the Word of God that they filled them to the brim because... The Lord wants us to realize how full they actually filled them all the way up. And I've often wondered how many times in life has the Lord put upon our hearts to do something and we only half-hazardly did it? How many times have, have we done enough to get the job done but didn't put it all of our heart into it and you know, and. and you know, I'm as guilty as anybody. Uh, there have been times when I got up to preach the message that I didn't put all my heart into it. And then I get to thinking afterward, you know, I didn't give it all I had. My wife has even said, you know, to, she's my best critic. I love her. She, t she lets me know what I do good. She lets me know what I don't do so good, you know. Um, but how many times in life it is as a Christian that we just not quite put it all into it. We didn't quite fill it to the brim. The Lord wanted us to know that they filled the water pots to the brim. That's being obedient. That's being a servant. That's following with what God wants us to do. And you know what? That's what I want to be. I want to be a servant for the Lord. Because he can take me just like I am and use me with the talents that I have to do some good in this world. Every one of us has abilities and capabilities. And they vary. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure glad y'all didn't ask me to sing, okay? Uh, because y'all would have left. <laughs> uh, I, uh, um, uh, my singing is bad. I mean, the dogs will howl when I try to sing. Uh, my wife is a lovely voice. Both our children have lovely voices. But they didn't get it from daddy, that's for sure. Uh, but obedience, the Lord wants us to be obedient. Uh, they filled him. They filled the pots all the way up. And then, and then, in verse 8, he said unto them, draw out now and bear it to the governor of the feast and the Bible says, and they bear it. Now think about this. Jesus is just asking them to fill these pots full of water. And since they're obedient servants, they filled it with water all the way up. And then, and then now, Jesus is saying, all right, now you go take some of that to the governor. Reckon what's going through their mind. But you know what? They didn't understand. They didn't quite comprehend. They didn't know what, how it was all going to turn out. But the Bible tells us 
that they went. And they did it. That took faith. And a beautiful, beautiful illustration of obedience to God in, in, in being a servant. And that's the whole crux of the message tonight is, is say yes to the Lord. Do like Peter and step out of the boat. Get out of your comfort zone and be a faithful servant for the Lord. And when he puts upon our heart things that he wants us to do, we may not comprehend it. We may not understand it. We may not, you know, but a good servant doesn't need explanation and a good servant doesn't ask questions. But you can't help but wonder what am I been going through their mind. But you know what? They, the servants knew what took place. Now, when did the miracle actually occur? You know, that's debatable. Uh, it, it, you've got possibilities. It, it could have occurred while they were filling the pot. Uh, it could have occurred when they were taking it out of the pot to take to the governor. Or it could have been in the walk of obedience. And, you know, I mean, your mind, you know, and my mind wanders in that direction. I, you know, I just like to think that here they are. They, they're a servant for the Lord. They, they fill the water pot up. Jesus said, take it to the governor. And they, and they get a cup of it. And in the walk of obedience, wow. The servants knew when it took place. We don't. They did say exactly. But I like to think it took place in a walk of obedience because in so many situations we see God work in the walk of obedience because man's extremity is God's opportunity. The, the ten lepers, you know, Jesus told them to, to go to the high priest and in the walk of obedience the leprosy disappeared. Amen? Naaman come out of the water in his walk of obedience to seven times to dip the last time through the walk of obedience he was clean. So we, you know, we, see, we see here what the walk of obedience can do. You know, God made the change, but the servants delivered the change. And the message to us is, please be a servant for the Lord. Uh, hasn't God been good to you? Amen. Who hadn't he? I mean, if you're like me, if you've got Jesus as your personal Savior, if the trumpet sounds right now, we're out of here, right? You know, we have a heavenly home waiting for us. We have a glorified body that's, that's waiting for us. And the Lord is going to come and get us. So the least that I can do in this walks of life is be a faithful servant. God made the change. But the servants... Delivered the change. And that's the message to us. Servants. Servants obey the master. God is our master. And he wants to use us. See, and, and the Lord wants us to have a part. Now think about this. Let's back up and look at it from a, from a high view. This is Jesus now. He could have kept the wine bottles full to start with, right? Yeah. He could have caused the guest glass to just never run dry. I mean, he did it with the oil and the flour. No, I mean, you know, I mean, he could have just he could have just kept their glasses, you know, and, and they're busy, busy with the feast and everything and not paying attention, but their glasses never got empty. Jesus could have done that. He could have just caused them not to want much to drink. But no, he wanted to let the servants take part. And he did in a mighty way. Not only did they witness the miracle, they were part of the miracle. So it just shows us how much the Lord wants us to be a servant. Jesus Jesus turned the water into wine, but he used the servants to deliver the miracle. Folks, he can, Jesus can take the ordinary and turn it into extraordinary. He can take, he can take uh, nothing and make something. It wowed the governor to the point he made notice. You know, you bring the good stuff at the end. It wowed the governor. And folks, if we will be a servant for the Lord, we can wow the world.
And that's one of the benefits of having revivals is for us to remind ourselves to say, Yes, Lord. And to remind ourselves to do like Peter, get out of the boat and out of our comfort zone. And to remind ourselves that we as Christians need to be a servant for the Lord. You see, there's a lot of benefits for revival. You see, so, uh, revival, it, it helps to prevent uh, find, trying to find fault with one another. It, 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 it keeps our spirit going. It keeps us bubbling over for the Lord. Uh, there's so many benefits to revival. Uh, it, 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 can, it can prevent financial crookedness. Amen? The Bible says upon the first day of the week, bring your tithes to the storehouse, right? Uh, you know, it can, it can, it can prevent uh, following after pleasure instead of following after the Lord. Revivals are so good in so many different ways. Uh, you know, it can prevent us from doing foolish and unfaithful things. And I don't know about you, but I want to be a good servant for the Lord. Amen. I want to be a good servant. You know, I, I'm not a dynamic speaker, never have been, probably never will be. But I love the Lord. And I love to proclaim His gospel. And Jesus has, has used me and He will use you. And, and He has places for us. Jesus used servants. And I want to be a servant. I want to be a servant for the Lord. I want to hear something like, well done, thy good and faithful what? Servant. servant. That's what I'm talking about. You know, I, well, you know, one of these days when this life is over, we're going to be with the Lord. So the thought for tonight. Say yes to the Lord in any capacity that he may be dealing with you. Be willing to get out of your comfort zone. To get out of the boat and be willing to be a servant for the Lord. He says, Lord, here am I. Just take me and use me. Now, in order to be a servant, two things got to take place. First of all, you're going to have Christ as your personal Savior. In order to be a servant, you're going to have to be saved. And then secondly, in order to be a servant, we're going to have to be dedicated to the cause of Christ. Amen? Amen. So, so tonight, if you're not a Christian, if you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, may I encourage you to ask God to forgive you and to ask Jesus to save you. And then, then you can be a servant for the Lord. And my hope and my prayer is that every one of you will strive to draw a little bit closer to the Lord, to be a little bit better Christian, to be a better servant for the Lord. Be a little more dedicated to the cause of Christ because there's a lot of people that need Jesus really bad. Amen. I'm going to ask if I'll uh, begin to get our hymn of invitation together. Um, be a servant. Please, be a servant. One of these days, I'm going to stand before the Lord and I'm going to have to give account for everything that I've done. You're going to have to stand before the Lord and give account for everything that you've done. Amen. May we be a good and faithful servant for the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you once again for letting us come here. Lord, as we have a time of invitation, may we look at our hearts, look at our lives. May we say yes to you. Be willing to get out of our comfort zone and be willing to be a servant for you, O oh Lord, in whatever capacity that you might be calling us. Help us, Lord to say yes to your calling, that we can be all that we can be for the cause of Christ to help lead and encourage people. For tonight's name we pray. Amen. Amen.